Good morning, and welcome to the Loray Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Kent, here in my study. Now, this is possibly the last of the pre-recorded services that um, we will have here at Loray Baptist Church, because next Sunday, November the 1st, we will gather outdoors for outdoor services at 10.30 a.m., now, the plan is that those service will be live streamed on YouTube Live, and I will provide you that link just as I have provided the links um, for those services on Facebook as well as an email. And if you want um, that link and are not on our email list, uh, please uh, let me know at drdr.kent.com. Dot Cranford at LoraeBaptist.org and I'll make sure I get you on that list. Um, you know, these services uh, that I prepare, I usually start Monday. Um, of course, I plan out my services months in advance sometimes. But I began really focusing, thinking about these services beginning Monday and gathering information and studying and working and praying and, and spending time, of course, in the Word and in commentaries about the material. And usually, um, I'm kind of wrapping that study up on Thursdays. Um, and then on Friday is when I put together the material on the video itself. Usually, um, with Christine's music, it's, it's ahead of that time, maybe Wednesday. The latest of Thursday is when we record those sessions. But um, then on Friday evening, Saturday morning is when I kind of put all that material together into the final format format that you are seeing uh, this morning. And so it has changed kind of my work schedule from what I used to do. Um, and usually um, in a normal time, um, I would spend... Saturdays, particularly Saturday afternoon and evening, um, putting the final touches on my message. But, of course, I have to have it ready um, now, um, usually at, at the least by Friday morning, so I can kind of uh, put it together and have it ready for you to, to send out and announce to you ahead of time. And that's a little bit 
um, compacted because I also have the Wednesday night study that I'm doing and I do that on, on Wednesday mornings and so it, it's made everything kind of compacted where as usual it's kind of spread out and I had more more time to do that but with the outdoor services there's, there's a whole new set of um, um, things that uh, I have to learn and and adapt to and put together so be aware that next week the service that you will have that will be live streamed on YouTube also will be available after that on YouTube so if you don't watch it at 1030 it still will be available later um, it may be a little different than what you have now and so just be patient with us as we come together and figure all this stuff out and and worship God uh, in the process amen let us begin uh, today's worship with Psalms 90. Psalms 90, it says in, in my text that it is a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. You sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like new grass of the morning. Though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our infirmities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. The length of our days is 70 years or 80 if we have the strength. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow. For they quickly pass and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath was great as the fear that is due you. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, O Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all of our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Thanks be to God for these words of his servant the man of God, Moses. Amen. Let us worship. Oh 
Today's gospel lesson comes from Matthew's gospel, chapter 22, beginning with verse 34 and going through verse 46. Let us hear the word of our Lord Jesus. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is is the first and the greatest commandment. And second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the laws and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, what do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply. And from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. These are the words of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
Well, okay. Finally, last night, we had the last of the presidential debates. Questions were asked, and sometimes they were answered. If you are like me, you're glad it's finally over. All that's left now is for us to vote, if you haven't voted already. In our gospel lesson today, it's important to know the context of the passage. If we go back uh, and look uh, in chapter 21, we, uh, 21 and 22, beginning of 22, we see where Jesus was teaching people, including these Pharisees and Sadducees and his disciples and the crowds, using parables. And um, while they were all gathered together, uh, the Sadducees came up with a question they wanted to ask Jesus about. And they asked Jesus about, uh, first about, uh, well, first it was the Pharisees. They asked Jesus about um, taxes. Does that sound familiar? Uh, and then the Sadducees got together and they wanted to ask Jesus about marriage and death and the resurrection. The Pharisees really didn't believe in the resurrection, so they were trying to trip Jesus up. And, of course, the, uh, the, Sad, uh, the Pharisees uh, wanted to trip Jesus up about paying taxes. Um, but Jesus answers all those questions. And Matthew says, when the crowds heard this, they were astonished at his teachings. He answered all the questions beautifully. There's no, no, no uh, change in the subject, no uh, talking in, uh, in, a, in a different uh, uh, form or attitude so, so that one would not answer the question. Jesus answered the questions and all the people were amazed. So, today's text, we see uh, that uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees get together. Um, now, and to come together together to answer, ask Jesus a question. Now, in the in the religious political arena of the first century in Judea, in particularly uh, Jerusalem, this was uh, this was akin to say the Democrats and the Republicans getting together, coming together to, to ask Jesus questions. Now, as you think about the impossibility of that, well, the same was kind of true of, of the old world. When you, when you see two different kind of groups come together uh, to attack Jesus, obviously both of them were threatened by his, his wisdom, by his teaching, by his power, but probably most threatened by how the crowds were amazed by him. So in the text, they gathered together and picked one, of, one person among them who was a lawyer. And he came and he said, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment? Which is, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Now they already had their own understanding of this. In another gospel, another man came up uh, and said basically what Jesus said, but Jesus added something to it. Now, before Jesus said, you've got that right, but notice Jesus adds something at the end. Now, Jesus pulls two of the 613 laws of Judaism pulls two of those. Now, just imagine trying to think of the whole Bible, the whole uh, Old Testament. You can include the New Testament and say summarize all that in, in two commandments. What would be important? Jesus did that with the Old Testament. You know, all of the Torah, all the first five books of the Bible, all the prophets, all those books of a famous men of, of God, one who, who was a prophet of God, like Moses. And Jesus summarizes those things um, from Deuteronomy 6, 5 
in Leviticus 19.18 and says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. That's from Deuteronomy. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Is, is part of it, essentially. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then he says, all of the laws and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So everything about the Old and what we read New Testament hang on this notion of, of love and devotion to God and what we do, and what we say, and what we think, and we give ourselves, our strength to God. All of that hangs on these words that Jesus provides. Now, Pharisees couldn't say anything. That was the, that was the, the profound answer of the day. It wasn't new. It was already something that, that they had, come together to understand but Jesus added that caveat at the end that all the law and the prophets hang on this so Pharisees had to get together trying to regroup in the meantime Jesus turns the tables he said he asked this, them a question you know turn about is fair play right he says, what do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? Now, well, they were trying to get together to, to figure out what they could maybe reply to Jesus or say to Jesus and, and come up with Jesus. Jesus stepped right in and he asked them a question. He, he debates with them. And, of course, the standard answer of the day you know, was that um, Messiah would be an heir in the lineage of David. They were expecting someone from the line of David to be the Messiah. And so they, they quoted from that. But then Jesus says, how is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit of God, which they would all have to agree on, calls him Lord? And then Jesus quotes from uh, Psalms one. 110 verse 1, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. How is it that David is calling one of his descendants God? Well, of course, we know the answer as Christians of those living 2,000 years after this event. It was that Jesus was God. Jesus came as God's son into this world that he might save us, that he might bring us victory over death and destruction and hardship and peril. I, I love the verse 46 of this text. When it says no one could say a word in reply. And from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Can't you see Jesus saying, you got any more questions? They were just astounded with what he had just said. They were overwhelmed. What could they say? This morning, let's play a, a what if game. What if, what if you met somebody, maybe at our services, there's going to be outside now. They uh, maybe have been a, a member that hasn't been here for years or maybe someone visiting. And they came up to you, you specifically, they picked you out of everybody that was here, even the pastor. And they came to you and said, 
Um, you know, I haven't been in church in a long time. I haven't really felt that close to God. Um, I really don't know, you know, um, what to do um, about doing that. What would be expected of me if I joined Laura Baptist Church? Now, first of all, you can't say, hold on a minute, let me go get the pastor. He can help you with that. Can't do that. That's, that's, no, you've got to answer this person's question. Okay? Now, um, I can imagine that the answer that you may give would be different from maybe someone else, right? Depending on your um, your particular interest or your particular activity in the church. Maybe if you asked, uh, maybe if, if someone asked Kathy that, she would say, well, um, what's expected of you is to tithe your money or, or to give as much, po as much possible to the church. You know, if you ask Cynthia, um, she might say to be involved in missions, uh, to find a, a, a missions avenue in the church and, and to serve the Lord uh, through the missions activities of the church. If you asked uh, Brother Bill, he would say uh, to visit, to go and, and visit people. You know, that would be expected of you. Maybe if you uh, asked uh, Keith or Clifford, they would say to help out with the building and grounds and, and help with some of the work around the church. Maybe if uh, you asked Tim, he would say uh, to read the church history. There are all kinds of different answers and different perspectives on that. But just stop a minute and think about that question. What would be expected of me if I joined Lore Baptist Church? Hmm. Well, I think the answer is the same answer that Jesus gave the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Same answer he would give the Democrats and the Republicans. He would say, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. What would Jesus say? I think he would say just that. There's an old legend in church history about the beloved disciple John. You remember John, the one sitting by Jesus at the table. And John was the only disciple of the 12 that lived into his old age, over a hundred years old. But as a legend goes, as John aged, he lost many of his abilities. He became senile. And towards the end of his life, uh, he could only say five words. My children love one another. In the legend, it said that they would bring him in front of the assembly of people in Ephesus, there at the church there. And they would sit around him while he spoke. And he would repeat over and over again, because of his senility, my children love one another. My children love one another. My children love one another. And they would sit there for hours until he stopped speaking, taking in those words 
of this disciple of the Lord. Similar words to what Jesus told the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Words that perhaps we should always remember to tell people if they ever ask us what's required to be a member of the Lower Eight Baptist Church, or more importantly, what's required to be a Christian. May those be your words, should you ever need them. And may God's grace and his love be with you until we meet again. Goodbye.